This is Bob Capetta from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and this lesson is on half angle identities. Take a look at our derivation. We have our double angle identity. Cosine of 2z is cos squared z minus sine squared z. Well, what do we know? We know cos squared z is 1 minus sine squared z, and we know sine squared z is 1 minus cos squared z. We will use those facts to go ahead and derive the half angle identities. So let's start by changing cos squared z into 1 minus sine squared. 1 minus sine squared z minus sine squared z is 1 minus 2 sine squared z. Let's add 2 sine squared z to both sides. So we'll have 2 sine squared z on the left. Let's subtract cos 2z from both sides. And we get 2 sine squared z is 1 minus cos 2z. Next step is to divide by 2. And we have sine squared z is 1 minus cos 2z over 2. This is our fundamental identity. If we hit both sides of the square root, sine of z will be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cos 2z over 2. We'll do that. Let's go ahead and replace z with theta over 2. What does that leave me with? Sine squared of theta over 2 is 1 minus cos 2 times theta over 2 just becomes theta. 2 times theta over 2 is indeed theta. And like I said before, the sine of theta over 2 will be plus or minus the square root of that right-hand side. So there is our half-angle identity for sine. The argument is almost identical for cosine. The difference is, is instead of replacing cos squared with 1 minus sine squared, we'll replace sine squared with 1 minus cos squared. So we start with the double angle identity for cosine, replacing sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. Now what do we have? Cosine squared minus negative cosine squared will be 2 cosine squared z minus 1. This time I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So we'll have 2 cos squared z is 1 plus cos 2z. And similarly, we'll let z be theta over 2. And we'll divide by 2 and go through the whole process. So just rewriting it this way, cos squared z dividing by 2 is 1 plus cos 2z over 2. You'll notice it looks very similar to what we had for sine squared z. The only difference is the sine from minus to plus. Again, letting z be theta over 2, this will be cos squared theta over 2 is 1 plus cosine 2 times theta over 2, which is just cos theta over 2. So this is our fundamental identity. Hitting with the square root, we are going to say that cosine theta over 2 is plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cos theta over 2. So let's see what I have here. I have sine of 15 degrees. If I'm looking for the sine of 15 degrees, I am asking for the sine of 30 degrees divided by 2, since that's one that we know. And the version that we want is over here. We've got to ask ourselves, are we going to use the plus version or the minus version? Well, 15 degrees is in quadrant 1. So, of course, we would use the plus version. So, keeping that in mind, let's take a look at our example. So, there's our formulas. Again, sine of 15 degrees is sine of 30 degrees over 2. So 30 degrees is going to stand in for theta. We know it's going to be plus. So we'll need the plus version, square root 1 minus cos 30, because we're using the sine version here, divided by 2. So indeed, we're going to let theta be 30 degrees. So sine of 30 degrees is plus, because we're in quadrant 1. Sine of 15 degrees is in quadrant 1. Square root of 1 minus cos 30 degrees over 2. What is cosine of 30 degrees? That is root 3 over 2. So we get square root of 1 minus root 3 over 2 all over 2. To simplify this fraction, 1 divided by 2 is a half. Root 3 over 2 divided by 2. Root 3 over 2 times a half. Root 3 over 4. So we get the square root of 1 half minus root 3 over 4, which is probably OK as a solution. But for fun, let's go ahead and rationalize, not rationalize, excuse me, get a common denominator. One half is two fourths. So we'll re rewrite this part as two fourths minus root three over four. Now we have a common denominator. We can write this as two minus root three over four. 
in which case we take the numerator of the top, root 2 minus root 3 over root 4. And of course, root 4 is just 2. So this is a slightly cleaner version of that. So that we get the sine of 15 degrees is the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2. Take a look at another example. This may want cosine of pi over 8. So I'm going to use this formula. And the question is, what will theta be? Well, pi over 8 is half of pi over 4. So I want to think of this as cosine of pi over 4 divided by 2. And my theta will be pi over 4. So using this formula, we're going to plug pi over 4 in for theta. Pi over 8 is in quadrant 1. Again, we're going to use the plus sign. This will be plus the square root of 1 plus cosine of pi over 4 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, or 1 over root 2. Looks like I use root 2 over 2 here. I'm going to go ahead and divide this fraction. 1 divided by 2 is a half. Root 2 over 2 divided by 2 is root 2 over 2 times a half, or root 2 over 4. Again, getting a common denominator, 1 half is 2 fourths. So we have 2 fourths plus root 2 over 2. Common denominator is 4. So 2 plus root 2 over 4 is what we'll have here. Top square root of 2 plus root 2, bottom square root of 4. 2 plus root 2 over root 4. 2 plus root 2 over 2. This is a simplified version, but again, the answer up here is also correct for the cosine of pi over 8. Take a look at this case. We're saying cosine of theta is negative 2 thirds. And then I'm saying that theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2. So theta is in quadrant 3. In quadrant 3, cosine is negative. And then the question is, what is the cosine of theta divided by 2? So we're going to go ahead and use this formula, but we need to think about whether we're going to use the plus or minus here. So we know theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2. So what about theta over 2? That would be between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 4, which puts me in quadrant number 2. So theta over 2 is in quadrant 2. Check that. It is in quadrant 2, so I'm going to need to fix that. I will do that. And that's fixed. So theta over 2 is a little bit more than pi over 2, but less than pi. So that puts me in quadrant 2. If theta over 2 is in quadrant 2, cosine of theta over 2 is negative. So we need to use the negative version of this, of this plus or minus. So you can see, indeed, I've thrown the negative sign in front of that square root. Well, we know the cosine of theta is negative 2 thirds, so we'll replace cos theta with negative 2 thirds. So I get 1 plus negative 2 thirds over 2. 1 plus negative 2 thirds is 1 minus 2 thirds, or a third. So uh, what's that going to give us? Minus the square root of 1 third over 2. 1 third divided by 2 is 1 third times a half, or a sixth. So minus the square root of a sixth. Well, root 1 upstairs is just 1. So we get minus 1 over root 6 for our cosine of theta divided by 2. But one of the key ideas here is recognizing where theta is and determining the quadrant where theta over 2 is. That will tell me whether I need to use the plus or minus version for cosine of theta over 2. Our next example is tangent. So the half angle identity for tangent using alpha, just to change things up a little bit here. Tangent of alpha divided by 2 is typically 1 minus cos alpha over sine alpha or sine alpha over 1 plus cos alpha. Now you could also recognize that tangent alpha over 2 would be sine of alpha over 2 over cosine of alpha over 2 that has all of those square roots. But here's simplified versions of that. So let's just go ahead and practice using this formula. If I have the following case, if I have the tangent of 15 degrees, what do I have to recognize? 15 degrees is half of 30. So we're going to let alpha be 30 degrees and make our substitution accordingly. So tangent of 30 degrees divided by 2, I'm just using the first version. So 1 minus the cosine of 30 degrees divided by the sine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30, root 3 over 2. 
sine of 30 is a half. So you get 1 minus root 3 over 2 over a half. Now how do we simplify this? I suggest that the simplest strategy is to multiply this top fraction by 2, multiply this bottom fraction by 2. That will clear the denominators and make it easier for us to work with. So this is our fraction, and this is what I mean by that. Multiply the top 1 by 2, bottom by 2. Certainly 2 over 2 is 1, and we have the same essential fraction. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times root 3 over 2 is just root 3. On the bottom, 2 times a half is 1. So indeed, we get 2 minus root 3 over 1, and that is 2 minus root 3. So the tangent of 15 degrees is 2 minus root 3. And that will conclude this lesson.